Hey, welcome back to Robot Cantina. In the previous episode, we discovered some problems with our fuel-injected cement mixer-powered street-legal go-kart. And that should be no surprise, because we're really pushing the limits of what can be done. So we sourced a new fuel injection ECU, and we're in the process of sorting that out. But for today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to try to figure out how to get an air-cooled engine to run a little bit cooler. When I say cooler, I don't mean this. Because yo, there's nothing cooler than a 420cc Hemi, or so I'm told. So let's do some backyard engineering and try to figure out how to get our engine to run cooler. So for today's engine temperature experiment, I dragged out one of my test stands. Now this thing was built to do general tuning on carburetors, ignitions, and whatnot, but that doesn't mean we can't use it for other things. Anyway, it's not a dyno per se, but it does put a very respectable load on any engine mounted to it. Now speaking about engines, we have a more or less stock Predator 212cc with a slightly modified carburetor and a straight pipe header, so it's nothing special and it'll be perfect for our experiments. So on the back side you can see the engine's connected to a General Motors alternator, and I believe this alternator is 100 amps or something like that. Well, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't have any problem putting out 100 amps. The belt drive is of course flat belt, and that seems to work out pretty good. So on this side of the alternator, you can see how I mounted the shunt to the body of the alternator. Now the shunt's on the ground side of the alternator, and this is only possible because the grounds on this test rig are floating, and that's because the stand's made out of wood. Now for those who don't know, the shunt's for measuring the current that the alternator is putting out. So on this combination meter, we have both a voltage and an amp gauge. Now these meters were sourced from Amazon for a few dollars, and I 3D printed all the plastic parts. So the power this rig generates gets dumped into a resistor load bank. Now between the shut and the load bank, we can burn off 1300 watts of pure power. So 750 watts equals one horsepower, and we're making 1300. So that works out to be about one and three quarter horsepower we're absorbing. But it isn't that easy. You also have to factor in alternator efficiency, and all of a sudden you're looking at maybe two, maybe two and a half horsepower, or something like that. But today we're only going to be pulling 88 to 90 amps, or about 1100 watts. The load bank and the alternator are controlled by this switch box. This switch turns on the alternator, and this switch turns on the cooling fans on the load bank. All the upper switches engage all the load resistors. Now these switches don't directly turn anything on, they merely switch the high power relays on and off. Anyway, when the loads are engaged, we'll be able to see the amps displayed on the meter. Now this engine is equipped with a bunch of thermocouples. We have one on the exhaust, another measures the crankcase oil temperature, and there's even one under the spark plug to measure cylinder head temperature. So it's 11.59 on a Sunday morning, and I'm a good neighbor, but not that good. I say we fire this rig up and start collecting data. But before we do that, let's take a look at the instruments. Okay, so this is the cube of knowledge. It's actually a plastic cube with instruments velcroed to it. And right here we have an iPhone S7 that will be recording the cube of knowledge, and that way we can capture the video of all the instruments. All right, let's do this. So for the first part of the test, we'll see how hot the engine will get with a nominal load on it. In this case, we'll just engage the alternator and the fans on the resistor load bank, and that should pull about 4 amps. So this is interesting. I had to move the cube of knowledge a little bit lower because of the interference from the ignition system. Now I've had problems before with the ignition upsetting sensitive electronics, so this was no surprise. Okay, so let's take a look at the cube of knowledge. Right here we have cylinder head temperature and the oil temperature. Of course this is the RPM. And we have some weather data. And we have a stopwatch. So after about 10 minutes, the temperature of the lightly loaded engine had stabilized. It was time to engage the 90 amp load. Now it only shows 75 amps on the meter, but the last resistor was switched in only a few moments later. It took 42 minutes for the engine temperature to stabilize again, and it got quite hot, which is exactly what I wanted to see. So on a hunch, 
I decided to remove the starter recoil and see if that would help lower the engine temperature. Now this engine is of course equipped with an electric starter and so is the 420cc engine in our street legal go-kart. So this would be a legitimate solution if it works. So once again we fire up the little Predator engine and set out on another temperature experiment. So indeed, the engine ran remarkably cooler with the recoil removed. Now the trouble with removing the recoil is of course there's no way to start a normal engine, but in our case that's not really a problem. Now the other thing to consider is mice. And it would appear the special effects crew outdid themselves once again. Now can I get a proper mouse? Close enough. Anyway, with the recoil removed, there's always the risk of mice or other vermin getting stuck in the engine, so that's something to keep in mind. So the recoil delete worked great, but I think we need to have a plan B. So let me suggest this. A little radiator. On an air-cooled engine? Sure! Let's try cooling the oil and see what happens. Now this engine doesn't have an oil pump, but that shouldn't stop us, because we're going to use a low-power pulse-type fuel pump. Now this thing is definitely not rated for the temperatures we're seeing, but if we put it on the output side of the radiator, and the oil that passes through it would be a lot cooler, and probably won't damage the pump. Alright, I don't hear any complaints yet, so I'll keep going. Um, so let's go ahead and pull the oil from one of the drain plugs like this one. Now to tap into the drain, you'll need an M10 by 1.25 nipple for the 212cc engine, and a 12 by 1.25 for the larger 420cc engine. And we can return the cooler oil through the other drain plug here. Now this is a crazy plan and I know it, but it's crazy enough I just might work. Let's do it! Now I reckon I'll need to drain the oil, and as you can see this engine's already equipped with a nipple and a hose, so this side of the engine will be easy peasy. Now the engine has cooled down since the last test, and I think the oil we're running is 20W40. Well, that's the oil I run in a street legal go-kart, but this sure does look a little bit thick. The best part of working on this test stand is the fact that we can just about zip screws anywhere we want. And like I said before, the pump will be pulling the oil through the system, so theoretically the oil passing through the pump should be cool enough as to not damage the pump, but that remains to be seen. So the rest of the cooling system was straightforward to install, it was sort of like putting together some furniture from Ikea. So it looks like we're all set to go, the cube of knowledge has been reset, oh and I guess let's see if the pump actually works. Good enough. Now on the back side we have a box fan blowing a light breeze onto the little radiator, and that's to simulate the air blowing through it if it were in a car. So a few days ago, the garage was crawling with these spiders. Eh, I leave them alone because they're supposedly the good spiders. We're going to send in an exploding caterpillar. An exploding caterpillar? Yeah, we fed it nitroglycerin and it's about to explode any minute now.
The load bank is dumping 1100 watts of heat energy, but it seems like the fans are doing a really good job at keeping everything cool. So this little fella marched right into the garage. Looks kind of weird. Anyway, I didn't want him to get into any of the spilled oil, so I scooped him up and let him go behind the garage. So I think we got enough data. Huh, another explosion. I wonder what that's all about. So this was an interesting experiment, and well worth the effort. I think the information we gathered will certainly help our street legal go-kart stay cool during the summer months, and possibly help once we install the supercharger. So we started today's test with only a 4 amp load, and we recorded a max cylinder head temperature of 185 degrees Fahrenheit, and the oil got up to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Nothing too surprising here. Now with an 88 amp load, or roughly one and a half to two horsepower load, we saw the cylinder head max out at 240 degrees Fahrenheit, and the oil reached a scorching hot 219 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a really good temperature rise, and that's the sort of temperature I'm seeing on the street legal go-kart when I do the high speed runs. So I'm pretty excited to see what we can do to drop the temperature. Now after the starter recoil was removed, we got an incredible drop in both the cylinder head and the oil temperature. Well, I really don't want to lose the ability to pull start the engine, mostly because of the novelty, but it is a great backup. But the starter has to come off anyways when we install the supercharger, so losing the recoil would have been part of the natural evolution, and I guess that's fine. Now the oil cooler, that's a bit of a stretch, but as you can see it significantly dropped the temperature of the oil, but the cylinder head ran just a little bit hotter. Now that could be due to the ambient temperature did rise quite a bit between the last two tests. I think this is a possible plan B, and if we need it we can fall back on it. Alright, well the oil pump seemed to handle the temperature just fine, and it turns out the pump only draws 1.4 amps, which is nice, but we really don't have any extra power, so there's that. Now I'm sure there are more options, but I'm not aware of anything simple. Now if you guys or gals have any ideas you want me to try, just leave a comment below. Now the only thing that I'm not really keen on trying right now is running E85. Yeah, I know that would probably make a big difference, but I want to save that for the supercharger, and setting up the carbon ignition for E85 is not something I want to do right now. Also, this test rig can do a lot of other stuff, so if you want to see something else tested, just let me know. Now I do want to mention that there is a voltage regulator episode coming up soon, and we'll experiment with the charging coils under the flywheel to see how much power we can generate. Actually, we already shot that episode, and I'm editing it together right now. Well, I think this is going to be it for today, and until next time.